can't believe we're still talking about this in 2024. It's it's astonishing. Well, they did put that show on last night, so. Yes. Yeah, so what did you think of episode two? Well, what did you think? I mean, I don't know. I, I, I the thought story that... of the show very quickly was we are going to tell you that Eric Bischoff did a great job, but then it all went wrong and it was not his fault. Yeah, well, I mean the one thing the one thing is I really think that they uh, they badly needed fact checkers because there was a lot of stuff said that uh, you know fact checkers pro- you know I mean and it's the same stuff as always you know it's like the excuses that that time wise don't hold any water you know like blaming the 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 merger you know the merger that happened before they even had their big success for killing it um the merger that happened after they failed for killing it you know things like that i mean the um you know the 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 first war the the first merger the the uh time warner merger was 96 so blaming that makes no sense because then they would have never had their successful run in 97 and 98 then blaming the aol merger which was in 2000 that makes no sense because they hit the iceberg in 99 and 2000 was a disastrous year and you know the idea that their budget was cut you know i mean which was of course their budget was cut because they were losing seven million dollars a month and so yeah they cut the budget so they got the losses down to 62 million for the year instead of 85 million in 2000 you know and you know it's just on and on and on you know just listening to this crap and uh you know i mean that was like i guess that was like one thing you know you know there and then just kind of the descriptions i mean for for you know for as far as eric bischoff himself went um he did admit to the, that the finger point of doom was really stupid that giving away the um the result of the rock and uh, mick foley match um which was both on the same show on the Jan- january 4th 1999 uh nitro show was really stupid but the reality is is that you know the they were still doing really good business. I mean, that January fourth, nineteen ninety, uh, January fourth, nineteen um, nineteen ninety nine show at the Georgia Dome. I mean, they drew you know thirty eight thousand eight hundred nine people, I think, and it was close to thirty five thousand paid. So um, you know, and and that was six months after the Hogan Goldberg, which drew you know a similar number, actually very slightly more. So I mean. They were still doing big business, even though their ratings um, were behind WWE. Um, but they were in the ver- on the verge of self-destructing for not making new stars, and they made all kinds of mistakes and and all that. Um, I don't know. I mean, it's the show didn't do very strong numbers or anything like that as far as ratings went. But uh, I mean, it wasn't. I, I don't know. I mean, like I, I there was nothing there that um surprised me i didn't think i i didn't think that anyone really gave a lot of insight for anything new i thought that um you know the the stuff as far as um what was it um i mean the 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 idea of you know trying to present that management like hated the company and then you have this clip of brad siegel you know brad siegel the guy who was out there talking about wrestlers being pathological liars and they show a clip of him saying oh yeah you know um people may knock us for having wrestling but you know i mean wrestling sold out forty thousand tickets at the george dome in one hour and it's like they didn't sell out in an hour i mean they 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 did sell forty thousand tickets for that show but um you know and then the hogan thing um i mean the whole the whole cr- chronology of the hogan thing was um you know, kind of off and everything, but I mean, a lot of it's off. So, I don't know. What do you any, any thoughts? Thought Nash came off horribly. Well, I he's, mean, I think... he's actually usually on these things. He's like a he's a he's a charismatic guy, and so like in the first episode, like he said nothing of substance, but like he's a charismatic guy, and he has some one liners and some quips and that sort of thing. But this episode, he had to talk about his philosophy of wrestling. I was like, oh my god. This guy's totally exposed himself. I mean, he had no idea what was going on. Sitting there talking about the only way anyone ever draws in wrestling is, you know, the Dude, champion. That, that was, that yeah, was the, bad. It's always the chase. Like, you can't have a babyface champion. It's like, you you 
can't have a babyface champion. For long periods of time. Goldberg has been champion for too long. It's like yeah, and it was, it's, it's it was, been like it, six months, dude. It was like six months, and, and Bruno San Martino was eight years. Hulk Hogan was four years. Um, Bob Backlund was six years. Talking and, about how uh, Goldberg can't work, so we can't push him. Kevin Nash said this. Well, <laughs> I mean, Bill, Bill Goldberg. Can you imagine? Had, you know, I mean, some guys have it. You know what I mean? It's like I remember um, when Conan first hit it big in, in Mexico, and, and he couldn't work at that point. You know, I mean, he had to learn to work, but he couldn't work. And I remember, like, you know, the, the, the big thing that he says, some people, you know, and, and Bruno San Martino was one of these guys, and Conan was, and Bill Goldberg was, You're born, you, you have an angel, which basically is that you draw, which, you know, I mean, as, as far as you have that charisma. I mean, and, and you know, you, a lot of guys draw who, can't, who aren't good wrestlers, you know, I mean, it's a completely different thing. I mean, being good wrestlers, one thing, drawing is another thing. And Bill drew, you know, I mean, it was like, could, you know, I mean, like, you know, Brett's very, very bitter at him. And, um, you know, I mean, I, I, I will say, I, I didn't think Bill, Bill Goldberg came off very well. I mean, and I know he's had to deal with the Brett stuff for decades now, but he said, like, um, you knew the kick was coming. And it's like, yeah, you know the kick's coming. But you're not supposed to kick a guy that hard. Well, you know, when I watched the show, it was kind of like both of these guys have so much pride that they've each just dug their heels in, and it's just gotten worse and worse over the years. Because, yeah, you're not supposed to kick somebody really hard in the head. But Brett even admitted, he, he goes, you know, he said watch the kick. Like, he even admits a guy called the spot. But then, you know, Brett kind of tries to claim, you know, I didn't know the kick was coming. Like, it wasn't... And I'm like, you don't script matches, Brett. I mean, come on. What are you talking about? You, he called the spot. Yes, granted, he hit you too hard. Yeah. But, you know, you got... He, Brett got really mad about it. And I think he got really mad that he felt Goldberg didn't apologize profusely enough. And Goldberg felt that he did apologize. And Brett didn't accept it. And as time went on, they both got more and more angry about it. And now, you know, Brett's, he just hates the guy. And Goldberg's at the point now where he's like, I don't give a shit anymore. Like, I've done everything that I can. Like, what else? I can't go back and change it. I feel bad about it. But yeah. now they both dug their heels in so deep that it's, you know, as the years go by, they're going to hate each other even more. Hopefully not. Hopefully not. Hopefully. But, but you know, you're probably right. But, yeah. Um, I mean, the, 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 the whole thing of... Um, you know, as far as the philosophy of what draws and everything, and it's like there's literally like dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens of ways to, that that wrestling has proven to work and things that have proven to draw. There's no one philosophy, and it's the only philosophy. I mean, one of the problems that I've seen with, with current wrestling and even with people who analyze wrestling is that so many people, I mean, it, it really hit me, and I won't say who the person is. I don't know if I even to ever told the story, but it's... it's one of the guys who's a booker now, and years ago, you know, probably ten, 10 or more years ago, I was talking to him, good, nice guy, very smart, very smart guy, you know, um, and we were just talking about wrestling, and I realized, you know, and he's, he's probably about your age, maybe a little older, and the only wrestling he ever watched was WWE growing up, WF growing up, and it's like, so his philosophy of booking like, he, he, he kind of had that Vince McMahon philosophy of booking. And there's nothing wrong with it. Vince McMahon was very successful at certain points for many years. But it was like that was the only booking that he really knew. So it was kind of like, man, you know, like I've watched, you know, 40 different bookers do all these different things. And, you know, and, and many of them were very successful, too, before Vince, you know, in other parts of the world after Vince. You know, it's it's not, you know. There's there's many different ways, but um, yeah, the whole thing. There there have been heels that that drew for a long time on top, and the idea was the chase. It wasn't even so much. It wasn't even so much a babyface chase. It was, um, you know, just you know, just you know, like the Sheik in Detroit and Toronto. You know, was like the most famous one, or Bill Longson in St. Louis, or Roman Reigns even recently. You know, I mean, these things 
Ric Flair to a degree, you know, I mean, and the, the, you know, whoever the NWA champions were to a degree. But I mean, the thing is, is that, um, yeah, if done right, that can work. Hulk Hogan, Bruno San Martino, if done right with the right guy, that can work. Um, there's, there's no, and, and with Bill, you know, I mean, the whole thing was, is at that time, Bill was still drawing and Bill was the hottest guy that they had. And the thing is, is when, when they talk about this, Bill had no chase of Hogan. I mean, there wasn't, you know, Bill was running through everybody. And then that Georgia Dome show showed up and literally just for the chronology of what happened, um, that Georgia show, Dome show, this is July 6th show, 1999. Um, I don't remember the exact advance, but the but I remember Zane Brasloff, you know, told me, you know, was talking to me. It's like we're gonna have the biggest crowd we've ever had at the Georgia Dome. You know, this is you know three weeks before the show. You know, we got twenty five thousand tickets sold. It was like at that point in time. This isn't like now. Now people buy tickets in advance. Then, I mean, people bought tickets in advance, but but they continue to buy tickets till the the show. I mean, we didn't know shows were gonna flop based on first day or first week ticket sales and we do know that now um but then you know it's like uh, it's it was 98 by the way 98 i'm sorry yeah 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 98 was when they were yeah july 6 1998 um yeah because 99 was when they were falling apart so anyway the um but the thing is is that um you know it was like twenty five thousand, maybe a little more tickets sold and um he mentioned it to hogan and hogan you know smart guy and also mentioned to Hogan, because he mentioned it to me, I know he mentioned to Hogan, is that, you know, all the bigwigs at Turner, you know, I don't say all of them, but many, many of them were coming. They were bringing their families. They were getting comped. Because um, there, there were a lot of comps in that building that night, 5,000 of them. Um, but they are all, they're all, you know, that's aside from the, the free. So that's so now we're up at 30,000 tickets. Um, and But more important than the tickets sold is... The number of executives from the company coming because this is a big deal. It's in their, you know, in their hometown, and wrestling's hot, and they own the wrestling company, and Bill Goldberg's hot, and all of that. And Hogan, being the smart guy that he was, is going like, oh, all these, you know, all the bigwigs are going to be there. How do I, you know, steal the show? So the idea is, he, the, his first thing that he said he was going to do was a non-title match as a dark match on the show. So they would have Nitro, and then they would go in there and do the dark match, and that'd be the last match on the show. And so everybody would see and go with the idea that Hulk Hogan and Bill Goldberg drew the crowd. And, of course, Zayn starts advertising Hulk Hogan and Bill Goldberg in a non-title match. He called it a dark match because it didn't matter. You know, it's, it's you're, you're advertising it in the local market. So it's Hulk Hogan and Bill Goldberg. And then... You know, whatever it was, I, I mean, it was probably a week before the show. I maybe it was, I don't remember the exact, maybe 10 days, but it wasn't long. And uh, they announced on television, the match was going to be on television and it was going to be for the title. And that's when Hogan figured that, well, you know, I might as well just lose the title to him because it's the right time. But the chase of Bill Goldberg of Hulk Hogan was seven to 10 days, you know, and they, you know, they could have done it longer. I'm not saying that, that, you know, it was one of the big pops in wrestling history, and it was a great moment. And, you know, they, they did have Dick Cheatham, you know, on the show going like, you know, we should have put it on pay-per-view. We, you know, cost ourselves millions and millions of dollars. Um, and it's true, you know, in the sense that they did cost them millions and millions of dollars. But the big thing to me was was not so much. I mean, it was the fact it should have been on pay-per-view because it would have done, you know, six to 700,000 buys. But the fact that they never even did a rematch on pay-per-view, Bill Goldberg's champion, and Hulk Hogan is clearly his money match, and he's champion for six months, and they're in one match with Hogan, and they're in even a serious match. Because if you look at, like, how they booked Bill Goldberg as champion, I mean, they put him in a battle royal, so he didn't have a direct opponent. They put him on one pay-per-view, not in the main event against Kurt Hennig, which was, you know, not Kurt. Kurt was a great wrestler, but this is long past Kurt's prime, and he was just a mid-card guy by this point. So Bill just squashed him, pretty much. And then um, they had uh, the one, the, the, the September, they, they had two pay-per-views while Bill was champion that he wasn't even on the card because they, they didn't have anyone. Um, they had... Uh, what was the other one? And they had the uh, one that were one of one of them was going to be Jericho, but 
you know, Bill wouldn't work with Jericho because the guys got in his ear. Certain guys said, Jericho's too small. You know, it's a stupid match. So he didn't want to work with him. And then um, he had the match with uh, Diamond Dallas Page, which is a really good match. But even that one, all the focus of the build was Hogan and Warrior on the same show. So it's like, yeah, he was champion. He wasn't even the focal point of the company. Hogan still was. So the next week's episode is apparently on Vince Russo. Yeah, well, I hope that they have some fact-checking on him, too. They will not. Yeah. You, you know that? I mean, did you watch this show? Yeah, I know. I know. Um, like I said, they badly needed fact-checking on this show. There was a lot of stuff that, uh, you know, just, um, you know, just like I said, from a timing standpoint, um, you know, just didn't add up at all. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button and you'll never miss a video again.